Hi there, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Astlek, a third year medical student from GMC and JD. After the NEET results are published, which college should I choose is an important concern that comes in both students and parents. In this video, I'll be explaining factors that you should consider in your decision making process so that you can choose the perfect college. And also, if you stay till the end, you can get two additional points. As always, everything will be time stamped. Feel free to skip around if you feel like it. Now, let's get started. Point number one, speak to a medico. The number one thing that you have to do before you confirm a medical college is speak to a medico. Yeah, find a medico and speak to them. Just don't ask advice from non-medical people, especially on medical related subjects. Because non-medical people go to the college as a patient. You're going there to study. Both are completely different, you know, viewpoints. So when you ask non-medical people advices about a particular college, all the points that they consider may be relevant for you. This is from my personal experience. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but if you ask me, I'll only recommend a medico for asking advices. There are tons of websites out there which gives you reviews about various medical colleges. Personally, I don't really love them because they explain about things that doesn't really matter. If you have a particular college in your mind, the best one to ask advice is a student of the same college. How to find a medico? Medicos are not that hard to find. Maybe you know someone personally or have someone else in college, maybe you're senior. And still, if you don't have anyone, then you know, go to Facebook or Instagram. You can always find medical students there. They are very happy to help you, especially in admission procedures. So find a medico. Now let's see what all things are worth knowing. Point number one, academics. Yeah, ask about the academics in the college of your preference. In med school, it's not like what we studied so far. There may not be a lot of lectures going on. It's all self-study. The professors will come with a PPT gun and you can see slides flying in all direction. There are good professors that teach with enthusiasm and interest, but that's not a common entity. But irrespective of all this, self-study is the main thing in medicine. Even though self-study is the main method of study, you can ask whether proper classes are conducted or not in your college. You can still ask for whether there are enough professors in the college because some colleges face staff shortage. If there is staff shortage, classes will not be conducted that smoothly. So please ask about that too. Point number two, infrastructure. Ask about the infrastructure in your college. In first year, the subjects are anatomy, physiology and biochemistry. All these are theoretical subjects and mostly you will sit in lecture halls. So lecture hall is a very important thing. Ask about them too. You should also ask about hostel facilities. Most of us stay in the hostel in med school. So if you're planning to be a hosteler, which is most probably the case, then ask about the hostel facilities. During exam time, we do combined study because medicine is so vast. So combined study is the only thing that can help us, you know, pass the examination. So ask about whether there's enough reading room facilities or library, etc. in your college. Point number three is patient flow. Is there enough patient flow in the hospital? Patients are the true teachers. You should ask about the patient flow in the hospital. Is there enough patients coming to the OP department? Are there enough admissions? Because when you go to the clinics, you go to the ward. You go to the ward and take the case history. You examine the patient, ask them about their complaint, make a case and present it to the professor. And your professor will correct you, you know, what are the mistakes you did, he will correct you of that. And that's how you learn clinical subjects, especially like medicine, OBG, surgery and pediatrics, everything you learn in that manner. You go to the patient, you see the patient, you ask them about their complaint, you take the case, you present it. That's how we learn clinical subjects. So patience is a very important thing in your studies. The art of history taking, examination skills are all gifted to us by your patients. So ask about the patient inflow in your hospital. Especially in government medical colleges, there will be considerable amount of patient flow. And I think patient flow is something that you should worry about in your private colleges. Point number four, college life. Enquire about the college life. Don't forget to enjoy your time in college. So don't just fill this entire time period with books. Participate in sports, participate in arts, you know, improve your hobbies, learn a new skill, meet new people, do all that. So do ask whether such extracurricular activities are permitted in your college or your college is just a study, nothing else college. Point number five is bond. Bond is an agreement between you and the college. When you join the college, they actually sign a bond paper. This is not something that you see in every college, but bond exists in some colleges. You can see the colleges with bond in the NMC website or when you apply for colleges. So before you finalize your preference list for colleges, make sure that you read about the bond. Is there a bond in the college? What kind of bond is that? 
how much amount of money should I have to pay if I have to break the bond? Different bond exist in different colleges. Bonds are like, you know, you will work in the college for one year or you will work in the nearby health center for one year, like that. So always make sure you read about the bond in the college you're interested. These are the things that you should ask a medico that you find. Now, before I wind up the video, here are the two points I promised. Point number one, going out of the state. All India quota seats are 50 percentage of the total seats. For example, if there is a 100 seat college in Kerala, 50 seats will be all in their seats which can be opted by any student based on his rank irrespective of the home state. The remaining 85 percentage of the seats are reserved for students residing in the same state. For example, that 85 percentage of the seats will only be available for a Kerala student. Going out of state is a huge concern for a lot of students. Commonly asked doubts are, is there any problem if I study out of my home state? Will I miss out anything? Can I become a good doctor? The answer is no. There is no problem in going out of the state and yes, you can become a great doctor even if you study out of your home state. There is a very high probability that you will find students of the same state in your batch and in your senior batches because all India got admissions are very common these days. So there is no problem in going out of state. Okay, learn new language, meet new people. It will be a very good experience. The last point that I have to mention is government versus private colleges. Speaking of the academics, most of the time, academics or lectures per se are much better in private medical colleges. Because in government medical college, the faculties are very busy with their own work. I'm not saying private medical colleges, they're not busy, but relatively, a lot more patient load is coming to the government hospital. So the clinical you know, subjects, they can't really focus on a medical student when there's a lot of patient flow. In government sector, there is no one to force the professors to teach you unless your head of department is someone who's like that. If your HOD is not interested, no one is interested to teach you. But in the private sector, that's not the case. The management is very strong. And on the financial side, private medical colleges are considerably expensive. If you're joining a private college, contact a student from that college and ask about the other fees. Yeah, there are a lot of other fees that you have to consider. Maybe you're worrying about the tuition fee. The tuition fee is the main fee that we all see. That is not the only fee there. There are different fees like hostel fees, mess fee, you know, special fees and all those things. You have to ask about that in a student of the same college. So if you're joining a private college and worried about finances, then always consider other fees along with tuition fees before making a choice. Does studying in private colleges make you inferior? Completely not. There is nothing inferior in studying a private medical college. In fact, most of the students who get high PG seats are from private medical colleges because they're giving a huge sum as tuition fee and they really care about education. Let me be clear, there is no problem in studying a private medical college. Apart from the expenses side, there is no other difference between a private medical college and a government medical college based on the skills and knowledge that you can have. It's the same topics, the same subjects, the same knowledge. So if you think that I'm studying in a private college, I can't be a great doctor, you're heavily mistaken, that's not the case. And what makes you a good doctor is not your undergraduate studies, it's the postgraduate studies that create the doctor out of you. So don't really care about whether I'm studying in a government college or a private college. So if you want to become a good doctor, it doesn't really matter where you do the studies from. What really matters is how much effort are you willing to put in your academic life. So these are the factors that you need to consider before choosing a medical college. And if you found this video helpful, please consider sharing this with your friends. And if you stayed till this length of the video, you can comment anything you wish to comment, but add a leaf to it so that I know you guys stayed till this length of the video. And you know, staying till this length of the video means happiness. If you haven't watched my video's introduction to first year, you can find the link up there. It's a very good video. I've explained a lot of things in it. And if you want to know about which books to buy, you can also find books to buy in first year med school. See you in the next video. Thank you. Take care.